Bees are fascinating creatures with incredibly organized societies, each hive buzzing with thousands of individuals working together in perfect harmony. But have you ever wondered why there's no such thing as a king bee? While other species often have male-dominated social structures, bee colonies are ruled by a single queen, with no king in sight. In a world where queens reign supreme, why don't we ever hear about a king in the hive? Why is it that the role of male bees seems so insignificant compared to the queen's power? Today, we're diving into the science behind bee hierarchies and uncovering the surprising reasons why the idea of a king bee doesn't make sense in the world of honeybees. Imagine a bee colony as a tiny, bustling city. It's full of specialized workers, each one contributing to the survival and prosperity of the whole hive. At the very top, we have the queen bee. She's not just a leader, but the lifeline of the colony, producing every new bee that emerges. Queens are uniquely equipped for this role. They're larger than the workers, live much longer, and secrete a special pheromone that keeps all the other bees in line and ensures harmony in the hive. Her primary role is to lay eggs and maintain the hive's population, but she also influences the colony's behavior through these pheromones. Queens can live up to five years, while worker bees only live a few weeks to a few months, depending on the season. Then there are the worker bees, tireless, dedicated females who perform every job you can imagine, collecting nectar and pollen, feeding the larvae, guarding the hive, and even cleaning up. They literally work themselves to death in service of the colony. Each worker bee has specialized glands that allow them to produce wax for building honeycombs and royal jelly for feeding the young larvae. Worker bees are also the colony's defenders, risking their lives to protect the hive by using their stingers against intruders, even though it's a one-time fatal action. Finally, we have the drones, the male bees of the hive. What's their job? Well, they only have one purpose, to mate with a new queen. Drones are larger than worker bees, but have no stingers, no wax glands, and no pollen baskets. This means they can't contribute to any of the daily activities needed to keep the hive running smoothly. Their sole reason for existence is to fly out of the hive during specific times of the year and find a new queen to mate with. And once that's done, they die. They don't collect food, build hives, or even defend the colony. You could say they're the couch potatoes of the bee world, except their one and only job is a life or death mission for love and survival. So why aren't there any king bees? The absence of a king isn't an oversight, it's an evolutionary strategy. Bee colonies are matriarchal, meaning they are governed by the queen and the female workers. The reason for this lies in bee genetics and the unique way they reproduce. Unlike mammals, where both parents contribute equally to the offspring's genetics, bees have a special system called haplodiploidy. When a queen lays fertilized eggs, they develop into female worker bees. But when she lays unfertilized eggs, they become male drones. This means that male drones have only one set of chromosomes, half of what female bees have. So, genetically speaking, a king bee would add little to the colony's success or genetic diversity, making him an evolutionary dead end. This haplodiploid genetic system has far-reaching implications for how bees operate. For instance, because male drones are haploid, having only one set of chromosomes, they can pass on their genetic material without the variability that comes from having two sets of chromosomes, like females. This makes the queen's role even more crucial, as she's the one providing the genetic diversity necessary for the hive's health and survival. If a king bee existed, it would disrupt this delicate genetic balance, potentially weakening the hive's overall fitness and adaptability. Isn't it amazing how nature shapes gender roles so differently across species? In bee societies, it's the females who hold all the power. They control reproduction and pass on the most genetic material, making them the backbone of the colony. This is a stark contrast to many other animals, where males often dominate both reproduction and leadership. And it's not just bees that lack a king. Ants and wasps, which are close relatives of bees, also have no king figure. These insects evolved with similar social structures, where females are in charge and males are mostly relegated to reproduction. In ant colonies, for example, the queen is the only one who lays eggs, and the male ants, or drones, exist solely to mate. Once they fulfill this purpose, they are quickly expelled from the nest or die naturally. In wasps, the dynamic is quite similar, with queens leading colonies and male wasps living relatively short lives dedicated to mating. However, termites are an interesting exception. In a termite colony, both a king and a queen lead the colony together. The king termite doesn't die after mating. Instead, he continues to stay with the queen and helps produce offspring throughout his life. This is crucial for termite colonies, which can last for decades, unlike bee colonies that last just a few seasons. So why this difference? It's all about colony needs. While termite kings are necessary to help produce offspring continuously throughout the year, 
Bees rely on a single queen who mates only once or twice in her lifetime with multiple drones. This creates enough genetic diversity for the entire colony and makes a king bee unnecessary. You might be surprised to hear that some people still think there's a king bee hiding somewhere in the hive. But in reality, queen bees are more like CEOs running a very efficient company. And the drones are just temporary consultants hired for a very specific task. Another common misconception is that drones are lazy because they don't participate in the hive's daily activities. But in truth, their job is critical to the colony's survival, even if it is short-lived. Did you know that a queen bee can lay up to 2,000 eggs in a single day? Or that drones don't have fathers? That's right. Because drones are born from unfertilized eggs, they only have a mother and no father. Instead, they have grandfathers and grandsons, creating a very unique family tree that's only possible in bees and a few other related insects. This means that drones have dozens of sisters and half-sisters, but no brothers. Imagine growing up in a family like that. Each drone is more like a genetic experiment, combining the queen's genes in a way that optimizes the chances of producing successful future queens. In addition to their unique genetics, bee colonies have developed a strict hierarchy and division of labor that helps them thrive. Workers communicate through intricate dances to relay information about the best places to find food. These so-called waggle dances involve moving in specific patterns that convey distance, direction, and even the quality of nectar or pollen sources. This means the colony operates as a highly coordinated unit, with each bee playing its role in the survival of the whole hive. So why are there no king bees? It all comes down to biology, genetics, and the complex social structure that makes bee colonies so successful. The queen bee's ability to produce thousands of offspring combined with the workers' dedicated efforts ensures the hive thrives without the need for a king. Next time you see a bee buzzing around, remember that each one is part of an incredibly intricate society, all driven by a single queen's ability to reproduce. If you enjoyed learning about bee biology today, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.